I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang, and welcome to The Big Picture. The Variety Kids Telethon is coming up Saturday, February 27th, from 6 until 10 p.m. on Channel 2, and Sunday, February 28th, from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. on WBBZ TV. Did you know you could be a virtual operator? Variety Club is accepting donations, so your photo could appear as a cardboard cutout on the phone bank. We won't have as many people this year due to COVID restrictions, but that doesn't mean you can't participate. Find out more at varietybuffalo.org on how you can have your photo or that of a loved one displayed at the show. Much of the money raised at the telethon benefits Oshai Children's Hospital. Recently, our John DeShulo caught up with the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Steve Turkovich, with the latest update on what's happening there during these COVID times. Well, we welcome uh, the, uh, what the Buffalo News calls the next generation for Oshai Children's Hospital. He's, although he's been there uh, almost a generation, uh, Dr. Steven Turkovich, who is the Vice President and Chief Medical Officer. Uh, Dr. Turkovich, how does that feel when somebody looks at you and says, you know, you're the next generation, uh, you know, with all of the youthful energy that you have to bring all of that to such a, a legacy destination as o Oshai Children's Hospital? You know, it's an incredible honor. Uh, I, I'm filled with so much pride when I think about this hospital and the legacy that this hospital has in Buffalo. I'm, I'm a Buffalo boy, born and bred. I was actually born at Suburban. Um, so I was born as part of the Clyde family many, many years ago. Uh, and in, honestly, I, I feel like the, the legacy now is really how are we going to improve the health of the children of Western New York well beyond the four walls of this hospital. And it's things like this telethon that really help us to do some amazing things for our community. Well, I appreciate you saying that because uh, we've had, you know, as you know, many, many decades with the, the telethon to help raise money. How important is it if somebody is out there watching to contribute? Where does that money go? How does that direct contribution impact you? Well, as you may know, many healthcare organizations and children's in particular are financially really strapped, especially because of the pandemic, but, but in general. And so every dollar that you send goes directly to kids. In particular, we take care of many kids with significant complex healthcare needs that have so many challenges in their daily life. And, and our goal is to make sure that we can maximize their, their, their abilities and maximize their quality of life. And, and as I said, every single dollar will go to help that. You, you mentioned the pandemic, and uh, since our visit last year on the telethon, when you were live in person versus this year, which is a virtual experience, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure you've been asked a million times how the pandemic has impacted Oshai, so I'll ask it for a million and one. How has the pandemic impacted healthcare at the hospital with you and the other members on your team? Yeah, you know, it's, we've been a really unique uh, position. We haven't had as many kids and, and people in the hospital as we usually do in an average year because the masking and the social distancing has have kept infectious diseases um, away from kids, which is a great thing. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, it's, it's affecting our bottom line. Uh, I can't say we have had kids admitted with COVID. We've had almost 100 uh, children admitted uh, with COVID since the beginning of the pandemic. We've seen over 200 kids in our emergency room with COVID. So we certainly are responding to the pandemic. But the other interesting thing is we've opened our doors to young adults uh, in, from 20 to 30 years old to help our adult colleagues next door at Buffalo General in the community so that we can make sure that everybody in the community of all ages have access to health care. Uh, and so our doctors and, and nurses have been learning how to take care of young adults, but it's really been a great experience to help, help everybody else. That's an interesting point you bring up because a lot of hospitals and medical facilities have had to pivot, to use a word that you hear quite often, with how the care is, is, is administered. Uh, I, I, maybe just to pick up on that, when a child or a young person is impacted with COVID, we hear a lot about how adults are impacted with breathing and cough and fever. Is it the same with a child, I would think? And, and what is the treatment that you would give to somebody who's a young person? Yeah, no, it's interesting that COVID is really a spectrum of disease, both in kids and adults. Uh, and we've seen anywhere from babies of a few days old who got it from their parents to you know young adults in their 20s and 30s. And so we've seen the classic symptoms of fever, cough, congestion, some breathing problems where they need some additional oxygen. And babies, though, they, they tend to act uh, really not themselves. They may have a little bit of fever, not feeding well, kind of lethargic. Um, and so most 
of it is supportive care like you would with any other viral illness. We have been using things like steroids and remdesivir, the treatments that you would use in adults. In a young adult, we also add anticoagulation to prevent those clots that develop from COVID. Um, so in addition to the developing pediatric algorithms for how to manage kids. We work very closely with our adult colleagues too to make sure that our, our care is consistent across both Buffalo General and Oshai for young adults. And a message should probably be made that if a family is out there with a young person, they should not be afraid to go to the hospital during these times if they feel that they need the services of Oshai Children's Hospital. Yeah, absolutely. We've worked very hard um, right from the beginning of the pandemic to make sure that we're keeping not only our staff safe, but our patients safe. And we're very proud to say that our rates of COVID amongst our staff are significantly lower than the rates of the general population. And I think that's a testament to the fact that we've been very diligent with max uh, masking and social distancing and all those safety measures. Um, and we don't have any recorded cases of a, of a child getting COVID in the hospital um, when they've come in without COVID. Um, so we're very stringent with our infection control policies and it, it is safe. We wanna make sure that parents aren't delaying care or, or not coming to the emergency room when their child really needs it because they are scared. It's a safe place to be. In the Buffalo News article uh, that uh, identified you as next generation in, in healthcare in Western New York, you mentioned in that, and this is long before COVID, you mentioned the importance of vaccinations and uh, talk to me about that, not only with the vaccinations that young people are to have in their regimen, but also about a COVID vaccine. Would young people, uh, should they be vaccinated? Yeah, you know, as a pediatrician, we, we are always talking about the importance of vaccines, both for those routine childhood illnesses, the, the flu every year, and also now COVID. And the interesting thing is, you know, the vaccine is not yet approved for young children. It, uh, the Pfizer vaccine is approved for 16 and above, Moderna 18 and above. I do know that both Pfizer and Moderna have opened up clinical trials for children 15 to 18. And we're hoping that we're gonna get some results of those by the end of this summer. Uh, and then once those are completed, they're gonna start uh, uh, opening up clinical trials for even younger people. So we anticipate that the vaccine um, trial should be completed for really young children, probably by 2022, uh, in which case then we should have the data and, and be able to identify what the right dose is as well as what the right regimen is. Is it one dose, is two doses, that sort of thing for young children. Um, and once it's available and proven to be safe, absolutely we would recommend it for any age that it's approved for. What are some of the other treatments that uh, you uh, offer and your team uh, at uh, Oshai Children's Hospital uh, for, for children that come in with all kinds of situations? So, you know, we offer a full spectrum of all pediatric medical and surgical subspecialties. So if your child has any need, well, we're able to meet it. Uh, you know, many of these subspecialties are, aren't in every community. Things like pediatric neurosurgery, pediatric rehabilitation and physical medicine. We were able to recruit a brand new young physician there, which will be working in Robert Warner. I'm um, very excited to have her, Dr. Diana Marchese. Um, and then the, the typical things like uh, pulmonary and GI and allergy immunology, genetics. Uh, we, we just recruited a brand new chief of genetics from Cincinnati Children's Hospital, um, who's bringing some really exciting things here in terms of genetic treatments and diagnoses. Um, and of course, our level four NICU being the highest level in the region, managing babies that are as young as 23 weeks gestation um, with some outstanding outcomes, uh, both from a lung perspective, from a growth perspective and a neurologic perspective. So we offer a full spectrum. Um, and the other thing is, we, as we all know, we are the, the only region's level one pediatric trauma center. So we are here with all the surgical subspecialties and the, the critical care that's needed in case your child suffers a catastrophic uh, injury. Have you met uh, Josh Allen, considering all of the great donations that have, made, have been made on behalf of his late grandmother? Yeah, I, you know, I have. I, I was fortunate to actually meet him in person prior to the pandemic before he was, you know, in his, his NFL bubble. Uh, and, and I have been incredibly impressed. You know, he, he's the real deal when it comes to a gentleman, a genuine person who really does care. You know, I've seen him interacting with kids and, and he's not going through the motions. He really, really generally likes uh, interacting with them and meeting them and, and takes the time to get to know them. So we are, again, so fortunate to have recruited somebody who's not only a talent on the field, but truly somebody who has a big heart, just like the Buffalonians that are here. A few more minutes, Doc, and then we'll let you get back to the important work that you do. You know, you've been at the hospital for, for a few years now, even though you're, you're still very young at what you do. Do you have a story of how you've been able to work with some families, certainly without you know, breaking any HIPAA laws and giving any names and information, obviously, but you know, seeing the progression of a child 
from having a bad situation into growing into a young adult, uh, that must be very satisfying. If, if I'm sure that you have stories like that. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's hard to go into the specifics, but I will share one story, um, sort of fairly generically, to, to protect their identity. But th there was a, a young child who, when I started here back um, early in the in the mid two thousands, who had been in the hospital for over a year from birth. Um, and she had multiple different um, anatomic uh, challenges as well as other issues. And there were times where we weren't quite sure she was going to survive um, because of all of her comorbidities. And uh, not only did she survive, but she was able to leave the hospital after her first birthday. Um, and it was probably about a year or so ago, I was in the elevator uh, and uh, she's now a, a, a young teenager. Uh, and I looked at her and I said, oh my gosh, and, and she's walking, she's talking, she's successful in school. And it, you know, honestly brought a tear to my eye to think that, you know, this is the child who, who spent her formative years um, growing up with us and developing. And uh, now she's out in the community, she's productive, she's happy, she's healthy, um, and she's overcome so many, so many challenges. So, you know, I, I, I hope that I personally, but I know the team here had a big part in that. Um, and obviously her resilience was just so inspirational. At the end of the day, our core mission is to improve the health of the children of Western New York. And we know with having such a high poverty rate for children, one of the highest in the nation, uh, we have a significant opportunity here. Uh, and so we hope that with our partnership with great donors and support from the community like you and all of our community-based organizations, we can come together with one voice and really elevate the health and wellness of our kids. Which is why as we wrap this up, it's very important to contribute to the Variety Kids Telethon to help you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Turkovich, the Chief Medical Officer of uh, Oshai Children's Hospital and the Vice President. Have a great day and thanks for all the miracles that you helped make. Thank you all. Take care. You too. Remember to make your donation now at VarietyBuffalo.org before the telethon, Saturday, February 27th on Channel 2 and Sunday, February 28th on WBBZ. When we come back, find out about another great hometown cause, Habitat for Humanity. Thank you.